Frankie Panky in Syracuse, New York. See more about our free prescription lenses.com. And today I'm going to cut your prescription lenses with Transitions Extra Active Gray and Crizal Anti Glare for your Oakley 8132. Of course, you got your Oakley hard shell case inside your Oakley cleaning cloth, and which doubles as the carrying case bag. But inside the star of the show, the main attraction, the Oakley 8132 which is the cross range switch i believe that's the name of this one cross range switch um in color 04 which is the black with the lime green and of course comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple which i will put on there when i mail to you it protects the temples from, from rubbing together during shipping and of course that's how i'm going to ship it back to you but this is the oakley 8132 color 04 and uh, size 52 the satin black with the lime green and of course the cross range switch is nice you pull this little lever down right here and you can pull the temples off and change the colors of your temples now this little trim piece will still always be that color but you can put other temple colors on there but let me go ahead and begin i'm gonna pop out your original demo lenses one of which says oakley and of course you're going to get all the manufacturer's original packaging i'm gonna put it into the tracing element of my blocker but first i need to program you are secret agent 0817 that is or as i like to say installment 817 of my 325 million volume series of making a pair of glasses for everyone in the u.s so let me go ahead and enter this barcode into the system now what's nice is that years from now should you ever need new prescription lenses for this frame i can mail you just the lenses and show you how to pop them in as you will see me do in this video and you won't have to mail the frame back to me. Let me hit the start button. A little stylus is going to go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at freeprescriptionlenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine, authentic Oakley frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number on there, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you'll get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. <coughs> Excuse me, and I also want to say that I am an authorized Oakley dealer. I'm not allowed to put the individual frames on the website, so if there's a frame that you want, just email me or call me, and I will make it happen for you. Just tell me which model, which size, what color, and it's going to be on your way to your home before you know it. Hit the next arrow, that is the... If it ever comes up, that is the shape we are cutting, only magnified. If I take this lens, you can see that's the shape that we'll be cutting. I like to magnify it. Oops, getting ahead of myself. That's not the right button. Come on back. Come on back with me. Come on back. Bring it back over to the right lens. That's the button I should have hit. Not that one. This one. Not that one. This one. With me, without me. With me, without me. This one. This is the one. That is the shape that we'll be cutting. Your pupillary distance, 32.5. The computer starts at 32.5, which means I don't have to do nothing there. I do want to raise the optical center height up to 20, so I'm going to tap this plus button a few times till we get to 20. Now I'm going to come down here to my Marco 101 lensometer and put the axis wheel on 02. Come on, 02. Where are you at? In between 01 and 03. Okay. Make sure everything's zeroed out. Now, hopefully it's right. The lab's already marked this one as R, put the, which is put the power drum on Plano. Rotate your lens until the spherical component comes in clearly. Find the, come on now, come on now. Find the center of the lens. Actually, is that where that is right? Um, Check the astigmatism correction. Everything's lined up there. Sorry, I was concentrating. It's hard for me to concentrate, y'all. You know that. Put three dots on your lenses. And it's not dark enough, so let me put some more ink in here. The never-ending battle. Why is there never enough ink for a lensometer? I would like to know. For this lensometer. Someone do a grant on your PhD thesis on why I can't put ink on my lensometer. I'd like to know. Plano minus one at 02, Plano minus one at 02. Put the lens in, make sure it's the right side. Again, here we go. Let 
and let's hopefully the three dots will work this time come on work with me work with me there we go it's awful light where'd my pen go come on pen okay let me darken those uno dos ocho and this is the right lens let's do the same thing for the unright lens which is the left put the axis wheel on 180 the power drum goes to minus a quarter put it in find the spherical component of your prescription check your astigmatism correction I need to raise that up just a little bit we're looking good there and I'm going to put the same three dots on this one those showed up a little bit better but still let me darken that one get darker get darker just like my humor and this is the left lens now if anyone missed any of that let me recap <laughs> I'm telling you that joke is not for y'all's benefit it's for mine I'm gonna keep telling it as long as I keep laughing at it which I will never stop and I don't know why it's so funny, but, I, you know, when the clown gets to laugh at work, it's a good day at work. So, as long as I keep laughing, I'm going to keep making that daggum joke. I almost said another word. So, this is a block, or as I like to call it, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So, I need to apply two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got two here. Pull these away. The black side is the sticky side. We're going to stick this one onto the first block. Do the same thing now for the second one. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. On the back is a silver button that is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice today. The first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet here in the arm. And the reason why I put those dots on there, it tells me that the lens is oriented in there just perfectly because of your astigmatism. And I'll explain what that is later. I can also tell everyone here is the chance of someone wearing glasses. Is it dark when you close your eyes? Are you hungry just before you eat? Are you sleepy right when you wake up? Then yes, you're going to need glasses at some point in your life. Hit that button. The arm's going to come down, place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now on the left. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet. Place the left lens onto the platform. Your pupillary distance is 31.5. It has mirrored at the right side, copying that 32.5. So I'm going to hit that minus button twice to bring it down to 31.5. Same optical center height. In fact, let me mark that I'm cutting this at 20. Get the dots lined up then. The blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. Your eye is just above that in inset. So make sure those two dots are li that's lined up in the crosshairs of a scope. I measure vertically and horizontally. Make sure everything is lined up perfectly. Hit that button. The arm comes down and places the block onto the left lens. Now this is the edger. This is what does all the work while I run my mouth. It costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses at home. And you will need this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to cut them for you. But the actual cutting wheel is on the far left. It's a diamond crusted wheel that's going to grind away your lens material until it's the final size. This wheel in the center, that channel, that little valley, that's what's going to put the V-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So now the magnet is going to do its job a second time today. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the Chuck or as I like to call it the Charles because I don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. I also don't know any other jokes, so if you find, if you know a funnier joke, write it down on a hundred dollar bill and mail it to me and I'll read it on the air and give you credit. You don't even have to include your name. I'll recognize your handwriting. So I'm going to wake up the computer, Secret Agent 817. That is the shape that I'll be cutting today. Um, I don't want to polish the edge of your lens because it's not going to be seen. There's no need to put a bevel on the front surface of the lens, but I am going to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high-index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that, but we're going to stick with polycarbonate. Hit the green arrow with the start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts, and then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the lens. And the old carpenter is saying measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, of which with your prescription in this frame you'll have none. But I do cut very strong prescriptions all day long for free when you buy the glasses for me and it becomes a little bit more critical then. 
So if you see light flickering in the background, that is water there to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, where plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex lenses cut wet, meaning that water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle. Now it will spray onto this lens for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris, should there happen to be any as it starts to cut. Now, as I mentioned, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is 40% thinner and lighter weight than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. They use our high impact ballistics grade lenses, the same type of lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and flying debris. It's also the same lens material that OSHA requires in safety glasses to protect the eyes of workers on factory floors from the same hazards. And speaking of protection, it also has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your, our skin. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin to damage from the sun. So this is permanent sunscreen that does not need to be reapplied. So if you notice, your lens is completely flat, just like a nickel. If I were to take it out now, it could stand up on the counter on its own. It's just about to go to the bevel wheel to get the V-shaped bevel cut into the lens now you have the transitions extra active which i'll demonstrate later you also have the crizal anti-glare anti-glare coating is three features in one it reduces glare when driving at night particularly driving at night in the rain but from street lights stop lights computer screens overhead fluorescent lights and such the second feature it goes by the initials arc which stands for anti-reflective coating so it reduces Reflection, so when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at the reflection in your glasses. They see just your eyes making much better eye contact. Plus, if someone takes a picture with a flash, that's not lit up. Or if you take a selfie, you won't see the reflection of the camera. So water is spraying onto the lens, telling me it's the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle. Now it's getting the safety bevel. A little lever comes out with a spinning wheel on it. It's applying the safety bevel, just smoothing out any rough edges left over from the cutting surface. But the machine that applies the anti-glare coating costs it well over a million dollars and takes over 24 hours to vaporize eight different coatings onto your lens. So because of the time and the expense, Crizal put the industry's hardest scratch coating on there to protect your time and investment. So I will open this door with my mind. You like that? I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. It just takes me a couple hours of staring at it, but I can do it. Come on, y'all. Okay, so that's dried off. Let me make sure there's no more optical debris on the edge of the lens. Let's take your frame, tuck it into the outside corner of your frame first and using my thumbs, press down the nose and it snaps right in. So let's go ahead and start cutting the left lens. Flip that over to L, press this on there firmly. Hit the green arrow, just like before the door closes, the clamp shuts and then the lens is gonna trace the left side of the frame making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame first go around and you can see as it's tracing out the shape and then second time around it's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing of which you've got none in this frame you hear me frankie you got no edge thickness so and i got a special on edge thickness this week you can have it for free but no you decided not to go with any your loss. So I'm going to take the block off, dry that off with my hand, my hand approved drying towel. Place the sticker on top of my sticker monster. It keeps growing. It keeps growing. And we're going to come down here to the lensometer, put it in just above that black dot, which is the optical center of your lens, where you'll be looking right through there. Turn the axis wheel back to two. And when I read the power of the lens, I'm getting zero, nothing. That's because your prescription is Plano, which also is zero. The unit of measurement used in the optical world is called a diopter, starting at zero and going upward from there. Zero known as Plano, also known as a city in Texas, but for our purposes, it is P-L-A-N-O. Some people like to say Plano. That's because they're weirdos. <laughs> I say Plano because I'm even more of a weirdo. Now, so you actually need this, the spherical component of your lens either magnifies or minifies. Actually, there's a third option, neither, which is what this does. It does not magnify nor minify. But you do have four steps of astigmatism correction. So your prescription is completely astigmatic. So once everything is the correct size, 
we have to take away the fuzzy edges. That's why, that's what astigmatism does. It makes sixes and eights look alike with the letters P and F. It is the fine two knob. And we have to turn that fine two knob to zero, zero, two. A straight line is zero to 90 to 180. So we're gonna turn that fine two knob to two, just breaking that 180 meridian. So let's go ahead and check that. Since you have two curves on your eyes, one curve this way, the plano, a second curve this way, minus one astigmatism, and that's how you line it. There's two curves to make everything nice and crisp, and we're turning it to two. So we're going to check that power, and we're getting minus one, minus one. So now your left eye, you actually need the smallest amount of correction possible for magnification. You are nearsighted in your left eye so you actually need everything is a slightly larger than it should appear so your left lens minifies the smallest amount it can now once it's done that you have nine steps of astigmatism correction in your left eye and when we read the power there we'll end up at minus 250 here we're at minus one because if you had no money and someone somehow someone needed a dollar you would have minus one dollar so for your left eye you had a quarter and someone borrowed two dollars and 25 cents you would be 250 in the red now zero and 180 are the same number it is a straight line zero 90 180 270 for those of you keeping score at home so your right eye is on the two meridian your left eye stays right there on the 180. you got that So Frankie, this time I want you to open the door with your mind. Hey, pretty good Frankie, first day on the job and you're able to do it. Let's take the lens out. We're gonna dry it off. Make sure there's no schwarf, no optical sawdust on the edge of your lens. Let's go ahead and tuck it in to the outside of the frame using my thumbs. I press down the nose and it snaps right in. Let's go ahead and take the block off dry it off with my hand approved drying technique <laughs> and let's see where are we going to put the sticker i'm going to rotate and you tell me when to put it down tell me when to put it down oh i heard you say something so that's where it goes do you remember which one it is that goldfish now you have a second pair on order you have another pair of oakley's this time you got the transitions extra active with the red I am sorry, I did not mean to turn the camera off. I was trying to reposition the camera. It's a good thing I'm a better optician than I am cinematographer. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment, also known as three-point stance. I press down, there is no wobble. And normally, on my glasses, there is no wobble. But let me take mine off. I am wearing the same frame. I am wearing the Oakley 8132, the cross-range switch. And normally, these are almost self-adjusting with the straight temples. Mine sit level. Normally, they wobble when they sit on the counter but to show you they're the same let me take my temple off and you can change the temples on your frames just that easily they come in about five or six different colors they come in two different sizes this is the 52 eye size I'm wearing the 54 because I've got a bigger noggin than Frankie Panky put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing yo okay that's good let me put this back together Flip this over, press down, there is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do, that neither temple is askew. Now this is what your lenses look like clear. I'm gonna go ahead and activate them. Clean them one last time since I've been messing with them. But I send out a cleaning instructions with every job, not only on how to care for your frame and lenses, but for your Oakley case, your Oakley cleaning cloth, the Crizal cleaning cloth, a premium microfiber cloth that I provide. I also send out a selfie request to have your picture on the website. Come on, Frankie Panky. That's what's on the email. Oop, I got some spray on the counter there. So and I field test every cleaning cloth to make sure that it works so that when you get these in the mail and there's a wrinkle, you know that it works. You can't tell me that you can't clean your lenses. So, so let's see something here. Here's the difference between, these are the Transitions Extra Active Lenses. I missed a spot. At least it was a piece of lint. These are the Transitions Extra Active Lenses before they've been activated. I'm going to gently set them down there. I'm going to take my lenses, which are the Transition Signature 7 lenses, and you can see that there's hardly a difference. Transition Signature 7, here is a clear lens. Transition Signature 7 have about 3 to 5% hue indoors. The Transitions Extra Active have about 5 to 7%. 3 to 5%, in case I misspoke, 5 to 7% for the Extra Active. And they're still virtually so clear 
next to a clear lens with no coatings whatsoever. So that's how how well they have gotten the transparency of the, of the uh, transitions extra active. Again, let me put mine back on. Maybe there is a difference. I just couldn't see it without my glasses on. No, I'm just kidding. So this is what they look like clear. And again, it does have the Crizal anti-glare coating on there that matches the color of the temples there. But I'm going to go ahead and activate them. As you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken. It takes a little bit longer when you go back inside. 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 to return back to virtually clear. Now this is important, Frank. You pay attention. All transition lenses, whether it's Signature 7 or Extra Active, will get dark on the first day and continue to darken every day for the first two weeks they're exposed to the sun. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time Transition Signature 7 won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that cause the lenses to turn dark. Now, these extra active lenses that you upgraded to will get dark in a car, about 30 to 50% dark. The other disadvantage to transitions is they get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But I remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. Now, having said that, the transitions extra active here will get darker in hotter weather. It's designed for extra active people who spend more time outdoors. So, They'll get 30 to 50% dark behind the windshield of a car, and they'll get um, even darker than a Signature 7 lens when outside, if you spend a lot of time outside. So this is the first time they've been activated. Don't worry, they're going to keep getting darker and darker. Come on, Frankie, we talked about that. Don't you remember? So, let's see here. If you like what you've seen, or if, even if you hadn't liked it, and you liked really bad jokes, subscribe to my YouTube channel. To see more videos, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook as FreePrescriptionLenses.com. You can follow me on Twitter as FreeRxLenses. You can email me directly through the website, but some people told me they had trouble getting through. So you can also email me directly at FreePrescriptionLenses at gmail.com. Again, I am an authorized dealer, even though the Oakleys are not listed on the website. If there's a frame, if you know the model, the size, and the color... Just email me or call me. My number is 919-491-2411. If it's in the middle of the day and I'm with a patient, I can't answer, but just leave me a message. I'll call you back after the shop closes. Also, the, uh, yeah, I guess that's what covers it. So, Frankie, Frankie Panky in Syracuse, New York. I had a flashlight, I just can't find it. Hope you enjoyed watching as I cut the transitions extra active. You can see as I keep talking, they keep getting lighter and lighter. So it takes about a minute to a minute 15 to return back to virtually clear inside. But I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut the pres your prescription transitions extra active gray with Crizal for your Oakley 8132 size 52 in the color 04, the matte, satin matte black with the green temples. I am Seymour Better. That's Mo Better, and everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. And remember to stay tuned next week for your other, your second pair of Oakleys with the Transitions Extra Active and the Red Mirror Coating. Ooh! Again, thanks for watching. Here are the newest lenses that have only been out for a few days from Essilor. So it's going to look like this indoors, and when you go outside, the lenses turn dark. But this time when they turn dark, they're going to turn red mirror coating. How cool is that? I can't wait to do that one. So we're going to turn the fine tune knob back to 180, which again, is the part of 180 will be played by zero for this video. <laughs> so put it in above that dot, read the power, and I'm getting minus a quarter into the red, one tick mark away from zero. Let's check your astigmatism correction, two and a quarter diopters. And we end up at minus 250, exactly halfway between two and three. I couldn't have done a better job if I had cut these lenses myself. So your pupillary distance, 32.5 for your right, 31.5 for your left, which gives us a total of 900 million, or, or 64. I always get those two numbers confused, 900 million and 64. So. Take the PD stick out of my pen, out of my pocket, place it against my thumb on your right lens. And when we hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 64 millimeters. So that is perfect. Check the optical center height of 20 and measure down to the middle of the frame. We're getting 20 there. 20. Man, the kid is good. I'm telling you. So this is the portion in every video that as I clean your lenses, I mentioned that there's always free shipping anywhere in the U.S. And last time I checked, Syracuse is in the U.S. 
but when you get these in the mail there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight however there's an 80 percent chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other that's because 80 percent of people have one ear that is higher than the other and i am no exception my glasses sit higher on one side than they do on the other so but i'm gonna get these in standard alignment first also known as a three-point stance oh I, before i forget because 80% of people have one ear that's higher than the other. 99% of all optical shops do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get these in standard. Standard. I'm starting to sound southern, y'all. I'm going to get these in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them down on the counter and press down. Oops, is that?